Okay, so this is the final print. This is the first test print actually for the uh, launchpad case that I designed. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the there's, the launchpad has uh, a little bit of uh, wiggle room, uh, actually a lot of wiggle room. And I've cut out a slot here, so there's gonna be a 3D printed piece here that can slide in when you're not using it. So you'll be able to just plug that out. And uh, it should actually work for other launch pads as well. For example, this. Uh, so there's enough wiggle room inside this uh, to make uh, it work for almost every launch pad. Uh, now, I wanted to do something for the CC32, uh, 31, uh, sorry, uh, 1310. So in this case, what I've done here is there are two LEDs right there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first use some uh, small screws to kind of. Uh, uh, hold this thing in place because as you can see uh, there you can see that there are some stubs for um, the mounting screws those have been de uh, designed in the print uh, this is a 20% uh, infill design uh, there are there's a place for the buttons here as well as here and uh, there's going to be an inlay button here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3d print the buttons and I'm going to use some kind of scotch tape or something to hold it in place and then it's going to have a little bit of a springy movement to the whole thing uh, there's no requirement for any kind of a support material so this thing was printed as is without any support material uh, the overhangs are for the stuff for the snap fit locks are small enough so that kind of works out uh, taking a look at the cap, this is the uh, launch pad cap. Uh, as you can see, there are two holes. I uh, have to make corrections for this. So in version uh, 2.0, that will be the release version. Uh, I'll have to um, make these bigger and have uh, sort of like a light pipe kind of arrangement so that it can uh, directly interface with the two LEDs right there. For the most part, they do come face to face, but then uh, things need to be done. I need to find out uh, if there are uh, some ready-made light pipe kind of materials out there. Uh, as you can see for the locks, I've already uh, added the uh, support materials in my design. So basically, if you try to use uh, the Cura or any kind of slicers, um, support materials it'll add a lot of stuff that you don't need instead I've just added this stuff here so on all four of the locks uh, there is enough support material as well as the um, width of the locks is quite large so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a nipper and I'm gonna cut the excess material and uh, hope to see this thing fit in properly all right I'm gonna use simple nips and try to remove the support material from the base of it all right so you can see that's it uh, this should fit here but of course it's not gonna work on the first try itself uh, the okay so if you see this uh the lock material is a little too much uh that i've used all right so the design really needs to be modified a bit if you take a look at it from this angle uh you can see that it's a little bit of too much of material so i'm gonna have to trim down the locks as well and this is actually very doable so all I need to do is add, oh, sorry, all I need to do is uh, use the little nipper and gone a bit too far with it, but so I can reprint the cap only. Ah, there we go. That's pretty solid. Okay, so it's a little bit of problem with the lock yet because uh, I didn't file it up. So I need to take a piece of sandpaper and probably sand off uh, the edges there to make it a little more smooth. But let me see what's going on here. 
Okay, okay, so... So there we go. So now this thing is pretty okay, pretty much okay. I'll still need to modify the locks a bit. Uh, I know what to do. I'm gonna make these slots a little bigger and I'm gonna make these things go a little lower and I'm gonna make them a little more flexible like. So that's okay. Putting them in the enclosure, let's say. So uh, version 2.0 is coming up next. Uh, I'll probably keep the base. I'll just uh, reconfigure the cap. Okay. All right. So I'm going to modify this design in Fusion 360. Uh, I've not printed out the button uh, thingy here and the slot fill here, but I'm going to do that some other day. Right now I'm interested in modifying the cap so that the f locks uh, are the way I want them to. So before I actually uh, modify this locks, a lot of people in a lot of other softwares would have to really modify the exact design as it stands now. But uh, in Fusion 360, there's something you can do uh, which has to do with the history. So if I take a look at the history, you can see there's my uh, support sketch. So all I need to do is grab onto this history marker first and go back to supports. So as soon as I do that, it's removed the supports. It's gone to that time where I started to extrude those supports. So what I'm going to do is uh, after that I've done, I've created the slits and the you know base stuff. So I don't want to remove that part all I want to do is just not extrude that part so just delete that feature and if I go to the end of it uh, it still has all of the features except for the extrusions for this thing so the same way um, to modify this uh, these clips instead of messing around with a lot of uh, new stuff all I need to do is just go in his back into the history where I have the sketch for the snaps double click on that uh, say roll history marker here and I am now in the the timeline where I've just completed uh, the uh, marker uh, I've, I've just completed the sketch for the snaps so now I make I can start making the modifications I can just double click here there we go um, now what I want to do is this line is coinciding with the body of the cap so I don't want to mess with this part uh, what I do want to mess with is the thickness of this thing all right so uh, for constraints I'm thank you neighbors uh, there is gonna be a I'm gonna fix uh, this point okay so I'm gonna add that constraint to this fix okay then I am going to modify this because my extruder is 0.8 mm I'm gonna do 1.6 millimeters and that's gonna just sh shrink the thickness of my uh, design and you can see because it's a mirrored uh, ex uh, design on the on this axis line so it's gonna automatically modify the design there Okay, so I've got this thickened out. Now what I want to do is instead of having this such a big, you know, part, I just want a smaller version of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, retain just this part. Okay, I'm going to add an, a, an arc here. Okay, so go into arc, uh, do a three point arc starting from yay point all the way to yay point and there we go 
and that's good enough because now what's going to happen is this extrusion is just going to be a bump that's going to fit in and it's going to be a non-fixed snap so it's going to be a removable snap instead of this anchor type of thing that's more of a fixed snap and this didn't really work out the way i wanted it to so bleh. okay uh now i'm going to go into the trim tool let me see if it mirrored things okay it didn't mirror the things here so i'm gonna have to probably manually do it there um trim this part and this part and this part and this part so okay does that work hold on a second um and of course trim that part as well on the merge side it's I, I somehow it's retained this if somebody who is working with uh, uh, Fusion 360 knows why this happened uh, please do help me out um, now what I want to do is again do the mirror mirror the objects I want to mirror whatever's here alright mirror line is gonna be this it's gonna copy it there before I do that I just want to go ahead and Select everything here. Uh, delete that. Sketch. Mirror. Mirror everything here. There's mirror line there. And do an OK. And once I do stop sketch uh, and go to the end of the timeline, computing extrudes, computing everything, updating graphics. Okay, it didn't extrude there, but let me see. Okay, so there are a couple of problems that happened. Cut, paste, bodies, extrude issues, extrude cap, so supports. Yeah, supports I know. It's going to create an issue because there was a problem. So if I do supports, can I just delete that entirely from my memory? Extrudes. There was some kind of extrude error. Yeah, so uh, it's done most of the stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's just had some problem. All right, so I figured out the problem. Uh, the clips, I manufactured it with the clips on a uh, as separate components and then I fused them in when I exported the STL. So that's a, uh, a good method, I guess. Um, so what we need to do is in these in this bodies, um, I need to take these two clips that have been extruded automatically by the timeline. Uh, do a control C or command C, command V, and now I've got two copies, right? Uh, so here I'm going to do is I'm going to set the pivot in the middle of these two components, which is somewhere around, uh, let me see. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, it's recording and it's rendering, so it's a bit. Um, in the funky side hold on calm down calm down so it's I'm gonna set the pivot somewhere around across this line there this is snap in the middle that's okay and I'm gonna set the pivot as okay now I'm gonna move it because I've created a copies and using control C and control V move it rotate it to exactly 180 degrees or minus 180 degrees and uh, as you can see it's comfortably inside the brim that I created the rim uh, the collar that I created and I'm pretty okay with this so click OK click home uh, click the back side of it so there we go now let's put Humpty Dumpty together one last time put it in the base put it there and go uh, where's the base there's your body there we go okay so let's do a uh, uh, section analysis from this side as you can see now uh, that there the clips are there all right so let's take a view of the so now the clips are there uh, they won't need any support material to print this thing is really uh, cushy and huggy so it'll probably take care of most of the fitting of the cap on top of the design and whatever 
uh, is left it'll be taken care of by this little thing here so it's gonna be pretty okay I'm guessing uh, I'm gonna have to 3d print one of these to figure it out but uh, for the most part uh, even without these clips it kind of works out this is re this is a removal clip thereby it doesn't uh, it's gonna keep it in place yet it's g gonna uh, allow it to be easily dismantled the key here is uh, I can c convert these slots into that uh, into something that mates with this but I'm okay with it because I'm, I'm not interested in reprinting this in addition to that if you want you can move this margin backwards so that it becomes a little loose or you can uh, add something here and make this even bigger if you want to make it uh, even an even uh, tighter fit so this is version 2.0 for the design and I'm pretty okay with it I guess so I'm gonna upload the STL files uh, if you like this video and my project please give me a like and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, visit my blog thank you very much for watching